So we continue our chapter on railway planning and uh, we have reached section three. And in section three, we need to understand the railway as a system. And what I want to highlight that it, systems engineering is not about drawing some a, a system like a diagram. It's much more than that. Systems engineering has become a well-established discipline that is being used in so many industries. And for that reason, it's very important that you build a strong theoretical framework or to, uh, in understanding railways as a system. And without further ado, so let's start. So systems engineering is uh, Systems engineering is a well-established scientific discipline and it's built theoretical framework in understanding systems. And in order for me to explain this very high level understanding of the railway as a system. So we have this box transports people or goods by rail and this is the system. And the components that comes into the system is there that there is a demand to transport people by railways because there is a, a, law, a need for moving large number of people or large quantities. There is laws, rules, regulations, and standards that enter into that system. And there is people, resources, equipment, and funds that's also entered to create the system. And with, this, with these three components entering together, there will be an output. And that's output, these are theoretical units. They are not really units that are standard or they are being used, but they are just a way for you to understand the output of the railway as a system. There is transport units achieved. There is transport quality achieved. There is transport value achieved. So the bigger railway transport system compromise of small subsystems to achieve the overall system's objective. And this is also important that you need to understand that not the only that the railway is a system, but actually this system is consists of subsystems. So the trains is, a, is another subsystem of the railway system, the track, the infrastructure that is another subsystem, the electrification is another subsystem, the signaling system is another subsystem. And for example, the trains have its own subsystems. It has the motors, it has the uh, suspension systems, it has the bogies, it has the wheels. It has, uh, it has uh, the pantograph. And so this system actually consists of a group of systems. And they are all working together to achieve the overall system's objective. So in order to understand this within a railway systems concept, uh, context, I want you to understand that the systems engineering start with a conceptual idea that becomes a product and that product satisfy that the conceptual need that it, 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 it was originally there. So in order to explain this in the V diagram, which is a very famous way for explaining things, there was an operational need. So we change those operational need to written requirements. And we, de we develop these written requirements to become a design and from this design, we change this to a physical product. And with this physical product, we have validated that product, that solution to make sure that it meets origin, our origin requirements. And then we have make sure that it's, it, it verifies and deliver the capability that, uh, that have emerged from our operational need. So from operational need to written requirements to design to product to validated solution to verified requirements, <coughs> verified delivered capability or verified requirements. This is how systems uh, are being developed. So now we have understood how railway is a system uh, that consists of subsystems. But maybe someone else say that actually the building is a system. So what is the difference between the railway as a system and the building? We think the railway is a complex system and complexity is a big topic, but just to simplify it for the railway need, uh, for the railway sake, we can understand uh, railways as part of a, a complex system 
and to understand this complexity, the characteristics of this complexity of the railways, we can think of four aspects. The first aspect is variability. There is variability on an organizational level and on a physical level. Example, staff performance, client demand, they are variable. But physical earth movement varies from one place to, uh, to another. Ground stability varies from one place to another, of course, and there is much more. The second aspect of this complexity is dispersion. The railway is dispersed all over the country. So there is a physical dispersion that the staff location is all over the place, access location is all over the place, how we can control this system. And the second is organization and supervision, information system, access information can be, it can be in different places. Diversity. Diversity is can be sometimes seen as variability, but it's a little bit different. It's more associated with material. So there is physical, there is different components types, different material types, different asset types, different asset performance, but also on an organization level, there is different products life, different products have different lives. There is different staff skills levels, and you need to really try to, there is different funding models, and you need to try to manage all of this. The fourth aspect, which I believe one of the most important aspects, is interdependence. The railway systems and subsystems are interdependent on each other. We can't say that one system is fully dependent on the other. There is a, 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 some way interdependence between the two systems. The wheel is dependent on the track and the track is dependent on the wheel. And, and this can be understood on the changes. So this is the system is in a continuous change because of its interaction with the environment, because of operational uh, requirements, because of, because of other aspects, this system is continuously changing because of a human intervention. So with this interdependence, diversity, dispersion, variability, we have complexity, and this complexity is always changing. So, in order to understand this in more detail, we talked about the complexity factors, variability, dispersion, diversity, interdependence. There is, you can say there is different regulation, different standards, different countries. You, you really need to think about the impact. So for example, the impact of a change in a system can affect the other system. So the, so, uh, the impact of change on train requirements might affect the uh, uh, the, uh, the track requirements. You can't, if you don't build the wheel sets or the access to the gauge, maybe you have to change the track uh, requirements or uh, change the train requirements. So there is, there is interdependence and this change, any change on any system affects the other. So you really need to start to think about the impact of change and the impact of change on this complexity. I think this is gives a quick introduction to railway complexity. With this, we stop here and we shall discuss standards and regulations and other sections in the next presentation. Have a, a, a great day and see you on the in the next section. Take care.